Chris Enterprise Console team. Uh, this talk was, will be uh, done by me and uh, Mr. Henry Hitoshi Henry. Um, uh, for the first uh, uh, part, I will give a talk about uh, uh, PG Cons um, Working Group One. So uh, my name is Tatsuo Ishii. Um, I'm being involved in, in uh, Postgres development and uh, PG4, uh, which is uh, uh, one of the Postgres uh, uh, clustering tool uh, for uh, years. And uh, I also I'm working for SRA OSS Inc. And uh, okay, uh, first of all, so anyway, uh, Postgres Enterprise Console team, uh, short, in short, PGE Cons uh, is. Uh, it is organized by uh, leading IT companies in Japan uh, last year, uh, which is aimi aims at promoting Postgres uh, in production use. Uh, for ex uh, example, especially in mission critical area. Um, in the first year of uh, PG Cons, we had uh, two working groups, uh, which are uh, working group one and working group two. Uh, we uh, published and uh, shared the first collaborative achievement with Postgres users in, and uh, PG Cons uh, member companies. So uh, we have WG1 and WG2. So uh, WG1 uh, focuses on performance of uh, Postgres and uh, replication of clustering softwares, uh, while WG2 uh, focuses on migration from other DBMs, uh, especially uh, Oracle and SQL Server. Uh, so uh, we have, at this point, uh, have uh, 39 company members. Uh, here you can see uh, some of the uh, company's logo uh, here. Uh, there are two major activities of PG cons. Uh, first one is collaborative verification. Um, PG cons uh, performs um, evaluation, uh, collaborativity, uh, to uh, provide uh, necessary information to uh, Postgres users. Uh, and uh, we hope the information is uh, useful for uh, all of the Postgres uh, users, not only uh, limited to uh, our cooperative members. The second one is uh, uh, promoting Postgres. Um, as you might know, uh, Postgres is already uh, quite popular in Japan, uh, comparing with uh, uh, countries outside Japan. However, we do not, uh, this is, uh, we, we have a uh, tremendous room uh, to uh, make uh, Postgres popular in Japan also. So uh, we uh, do uh, uh, some promoting uh, activities, uh, including uh, a seminar and, uh, uh, and so on. Uh, you can see uh, uh, this picture, uh, which is taken from the uh, conference held in Japan um, in April. So uh, please take a look at the web page, our web page here. Okay, um, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, WG1 activities uh, selected um, <coughs> through a discussion. Uh, he, um, here are uh, a number of areas uh, which is a concern about the Postgres, um, um, namely performance, high availability, uh, maintainability, serviceability, uh, security, uh, compatibility, and connectivity. 
Apparently, uh, there are too much uh, for activities for the first year. Even we have about 40 uh, companies. So uh, through the discussion, uh, we have chosen some of them, especially uh, focus on uh, performance activity. So uh, these are uh, performance act, uh, area concerns. However, uh, these are also uh, divided into some areas. Performance evaluation method, uh, scale up, uh, scale out, uh, performance enhancing, and performance tuning. And finally, we decided to uh, do a, a study about uh, scaling up and scaling out. Uh, here is a more uh, detailed description about the first activities of WG1. Uh, first is uh, scale up performance evaluation. Uh, especially, uh, we are interested in uh, uh, many core machines, servers, uh, recently uh, available. So, at this point, um, Postgres uh, uh, stable version is 9.2, and uh, we are very interested in how it uh, performs well on these uh, many core machines. So, uh, we have uh, done two uh, uh, testing. The first one is a lead query uh, benchmark uh, using PGBench. Uh, the other is uh, a TPC, uh, very simplified TPC-like test um, done by uh, JDBC run two uh, called JDBC runner. And the second area is uh, scale out. In this area, uh, we are using uh, uh, not single ma single server, uh, but uh, one of up to uh, four servers um, consisting of clustering system. Um, moreover, uh, we have been tested um, three uh, different software. Uh, first one is uh, Postgres uh, itself. As you, as you might know, uh, this one has uh, um, nice uh, functionality uh, called cascading replication, uh, which is uh, asynchronous replication system. The second one is PG42. Uh, this is uh, adapted for Postgres and uh, can be uh, performed synchronous re replication. And uh, this software uh, is uh, uh, can done uh, load balancing uh, for lead queries. Uh, the third one is Postgres XC. Uh, this is um, developed in uh, Japan mainly in Japan also. And then the main feature uh, is uh, data distribution. And uh, this could uh, do a, a load balancing uh, for light queries. Uh, Mr. Koichi, uh, please raise your hand. Uh, here is a, a main, um, major developer of uh, here, over here. Okay. Yeah, and remember when you uh, remember when you discussed it for about uh, more than two months ago. Mm -hmm. So uh, for the first fiscal years, uh, we have an we have an achieve achievements. We created a document document um, which is over uh, seventy pages. And this one includes all the uh, detailed results of the benchmarks and uh, the way to reprodu reproduce the uh, testing. And then uh, moreover, uh, this document uh, can be uh, distributed and uh, reused by open source license uh, CCL. Uh, this document looks like this. But unfortunately, as you can see, at this moment, uh, this one is um, only written in Japanese. 
I hope someday um, this, this book is available in, in English. OK, uh, first one is uh, scale up performance evaluation. As I, can, as I have already said, uh, we tested two uh, variations of uh, evaluations. Uh, first, first, one is, first one is done by a uh, very simple one, uh, PG bench. And uh, we evaluated the test on the 80 core uh, machine. And then, uh, in summary, uh, we confirmed that the Postgres scales up to uh, eight, 80 clients uh, for lead queries. Uh, this is a very detailed of, uh, uh, evaluation. Um, unfortunately, I don't have enough time uh, now uh, to explain a very little, little about this. So uh, please take a look at the slide on the uh, PGCon website or uh, uh, our uh, PGECons website. You can see a, a detail of the uh, slide. Um, essentially, uh, we have two machines. One is for uh, PG bench clients, and the other is, of course, uh, ADGO servers uh, where uh, Postgres uh, is running on. Uh, this one is uh, a relatively huge server and uh, cons uh, has as many as two terabytes of memory. Uh, this one is uh, a script for PG Bench. Uh, PG Bench can run a special script, so we have created a special one for a uh, uh, lead query. The reason why you, I do, we do, did not use the default script uh, scenario for PG Bench is that uh, the default scenario uh, is uh, too uh, subtle uh, to uh, make a load uh, for the server. So we decided to create a custom script to uh, make uh, enough load. Uh, this is the result of graph. The, the y-x axis is uh, uh, transaction per second, TPS. And the x-axis is the number of <coughs> concurrent clients. As you can see, um, the, the performance um, goes up according to the uh, number of clients. And uh, at, the, at this point, uh, which is exactly the same as the number of cores, 80, uh, we got uh, uh, max, maximum performance here. Uh, we are very pleased about the uh, result of this testing. Uh, the second scale-up performance evaluation is uh, uh, using JDBC runner, uh, which is different from the first one in, in that uh, this one does uh, not only read query, but uh, write queries. Um, JDBC runner uh, is uh, essentially a very simple uh, simplified uh, TPCC uh, has a TPCC scenario. So uh, this is the result of the uh, testing. And this time, the y-axis is uh, um, transactions per minute, no second. Okay, and the x-axis is uh, a number of concurrent sessions. Uh, TPCC uh, consists of several uh, different uh, major uh, methods. Um, new order, payment, uh, order status, and so on. Uh, this is a kind of a simulation of, of um, consumer, um, uh, for consumers uh, selling site on the web. So uh, as you can see, um, again, the number, uh, the performance is uh, going up according to the uh, number of concrete sessions. Uh, here is a graph for uh, CPU utilization uh, when we use 40 cores. Um, the left side is uh, server CPU utilization. Uh, it is at most 50%. And the right side is uh, uh, client size of CPU utilization. So we have uh, tremendous room 
uh, regarding CPU uh, linearization. Um, this does not necessarily mean that the uh, good thing. Um, rather, uh, this indicates that uh, there are uh, some uh, room, there are room to uh, make an enhancement. Uh, here, uh, uh, disk utilization graph. As you can see, uh, almost 100 percent is uh, uh, the, the uh, I/O utilization, and uh, all, so that this means that uh, there might be there there is a possible bottleneck uh, with I/O in this uh, test. Now, in fact, um, we use uh, 80 cores for this the same exactly exactly the same test as well but we c uh, couldn't get any better uh, result so uh, we hope that uh, if postgres uh, will be enhanced in the regard of uh, io access uh, we will be able to get better number uh, for 80 cores The next one is a scale out evaluation. And the first scale out evaluation is for uh, Postgres uh, cascading replication. In this test, uh, we'd like to check the uh, performance of master DB uh, performance because it is uh, critical in, the, in this uh, clustering system uh, that master um, performs well. And uh, in, as a result, uh, we confirmed that the master DB performance is stable, uh, even if the number of uh, slaves increase. Now, this is an image of uh, uh, evaluation model. Uh, here we have a headquarter office. Uh, in, this, in the office, we have master database um, along with uh, custodian st standby. And then uh, this company has a number of uh, uh, factories. Uh, each factory has a uh, standby servers. So uh, design documentation and or uh, some other such uh, information will be uh, provided from uh, headquarter office uh, through a replication system. So uh, in this test, we are focusing on uh, light uh, performance stability. If uh, these number of uh, factories are growing, uh, if uh, the light, stability, light performance is going down, then there will be a problem. Uh, this is the actual uh, testing system. Uh, there is a, a PG bench client which uh, produces a load to the clustering system. And the master database, clustering st standby, uh, which, are, which has uh, external storage. And then uh, there are up to four standby servers. Uh, they have their own uh, storage. Uh, this is the result of the evaluation. Uh, here is a tip, uh, y axis is TP, TPS, and the x axis is number of uh, standby servers. Uh, as you can see, uh, the performance is very stable, even if the number of uh, standby servers uh, num is growing. And then uh, you can see uh, also a more detailed data here. Uh, for master, uh, you can see. Uh, uh, data from SAR, and then this is uh, the case for one standby, two standby, and so on. And they are almost the same. So uh, we can conclude that here, uh, update performance of master nodes is very stable, uh, even if the number of standby nodes increase. OK, uh, next scale out evaluation is uh, PG pool 2. Uh, PGP2, um, in summary, uh, we can get this result. Uh, for light carry performance, uh, it decreases as the number of uh, nodes increases. 
while uh, for read query, uh, it, in, it increases as the number of nodes increases. Uh, here is a system for uh, benchmarking for PG42. Uh, we have four uh, PG bench clients, and each connected to a uh, 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 PG42. Uh, PG42 uh, replicates a qu query to the Postgres uh, system. And uh, we uh, tested up to four of uh, these combinations. And uh, in this test, the uh, performance is defined as a total uh, of each PG bench TPS. <coughs> OK, uh, here is the result of a right query. Again, uh, y axis is a uh, number of transactions per second, and uh, y x axis is the number of node, uh, nodes. And the red line is uh, uh, total TPS uh, from uh, each PG bench. As you can see, uh, as the non node number of nodes decrease, uh, increases, the TPS uh, decreases decreases gradually. And the green one is uh, uh, average TPS uh, for each uh, node. Now here is a uh, uh, benchmark result for lead query. Now this is very different from the previous one. Um, as the number of nodes decreases, uh, increases, and the TPS almost linearly increases. So we can uh, say that uh, uh, total TPS increase as the number of nodes increases. Uh, uh, in other words, uh, PJ42 scales out uh, for lead queries. OK, uh, the last one is Postgres XC. Um, in summary, uh, we can uh, we get uh, good results for light queries. As the number of nodes increases, uh, the total TPS increases. The second one is for uh, red query. Uh, this one is uh, um, we are given uh, comments from uh, Mr. Koichi, uh, Koichi Suzuki. Um, it seems that the read query performance uh, it only increases when data size is larger. Um, I will, I'm going to tell the details later. Uh, this is a benchmark system for Postgres XC. Uh, this is very similar to uh, previous uh, testings. Uh, we have a number of uh, PG bench clients. And also, we have up to uh, four uh, Postgres XC uh, nodes. Um, are you uh, familiar with Postgres XC? Has anybody? Uh, I, OK, uh, I have one. Um, so um, I'm going to give a, a a small explanation about, uh, about how uh, Postgres XC is consisted. Um, po Postgres XC uh, is consisted with uh, uh, three major components. Uh, one is coordinator, and the other is data. Node. Also, we have GTM or GTM proxy. Uh, coordinator is responsible for uh, accepting connections from clients and distribute to data node. A data node is essentially a um, modified version of Postgres, uh, of course, uh, which is adapting to uh, distributed processing. And the last one is GTM. GTM is responsible for uh, global transaction ID management. And the GTM proxy is a proxy uh, for GTM. So in this configuration, uh, we have coordinator, data node, and the GTM proxy for each node. Uh, this one is a recommended configuration uh, of Postgres XC. OK, uh, this is a light query result. As you can see, uh, 
as the number of nodes increases, increases uh, the total TPS is increases. So uh, this is be very good result uh, for writing queries. Uh, please note that um, this is the first system uh, we observe the uh, light query result increase scales out. Uh, before PostgreSQL, uh, we have no si no such a system uh, which is uh, light scalable. So I'm glad to see uh, this result. Uh, this is a uh, lead query result. Uh, which I can get uh, uh, um, performance increases as a number of nodes. So, uh, so far, uh, this is good. But however, uh, when we compare the uh, performance uh, with uh, a single uh, ordinary Postgres, um, the read query performance is not um, the same as uh, uh, Postgres one, uh, um, rather uh, not so good uh, compared with Postgres. So here I got a comment from um, Koich. Okay, uh, thank you uh, for the comment. Uh, in fact, uh, PG course, we continue the, uh, this kind of uh, activity uh, in uh, this year, and um, we hope to uh, evaluate, uh, do the evaluate evaluation again, um, including a Postgres XC, uh, to get any better number. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Uh, Koich, uh, Suzuki, uh, please help us. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, excuse me. <coughs> what's the size of the data volume? 
Uh, in, in this case, uh, 15 gigabytes. 15 gigabytes? Yes. For each row or total? Um, total, in total. So uh, that means um, when there are uh, two nodes, uh, each has 7.5 gigabytes data. And then if there are four nodes, uh, it is uh, um, 3, point, uh, 3 gigabytes or so uh, for each node. OK? OK. So uh, these are a very brief summary of uh, activities uh, performed by WG1 in uh, 2012. So first one is, uh, was scale, scale up evaluation. Um, I know uh, there are already uh, a report um, regarding uh, CPU scalability, uh, which uh, I believe uh, testing was done for uh, 64 cores. Uh, while we uh, have done the test for 80 cores, and uh, we are very pleased with uh, Postgres uh, read query CPU scalability. The second one is scale out evaluation. Uh, we uh, tested cas cascading replication, pgpo 2 and Postgres XC. Uh, each uh, showed a very di different characteristic characteristic. Uh, the rep cascading replication keep a stable uh, light performance even if number of nodes increases. Uh, PGPO2 uh, seems to be strong in uh, read queries. And uh, Postgres XC uh, seems to be uh, strong in light queries. So uh, we, we observed very different characteristics of these clusters. clusters. So um, I would like to uh, Postgres users to choose a uh, light clustering system for uh, their, uh, depending on their uh, purpose. Okay, uh, that's it for uh, WG1 report. Oh, um, just a moment, I need to uh, move my microphones to him. Okay, uh, thank you for joining this talk. Uh, I'm Hitoshi Henmi from NTT, and uh, I will uh, take over Mr. Ishii and we'll talk about uh, the achievement of a second working group uh, of uh, PG Econs. Uh, this slide shows the agenda of my part. Uh, first, uh, I'd like uh, talk about uh, how we decide the theme of second working group. And the second, uh, I will talk about the details of each uh, uh, study topics. And uh, uh, finally, uh, I, will, I will conclude my talk uh, by, uh, uh, by giving some remarks. Okay. Uh, the the theme of uh, second working group is uh, DBMS mig migrations. And uh, I'd like to talk about how we decide this theme. Uh, this slide shows uh, uh, a result of, uh, the result of a questionnaire 
in, in a, a PG econ opening seminar. Uh, the question was, uh, which DBMS uh, are you using? Uh, the top uh, uh, the top result is uh, Oracle. Uh, the count is uh, maybe 46. The second is uh, Postgres, and the count is uh, 31. And uh, the third uh, uh, SQL Server and MySQL, and the count is uh, 16 each. And following those uh, is IBM DB2, and the count is six. And uh, there, are, there is only one person who uses the service. Okay, the point is here is that users of Oracle, uh, DB2, uh, SQL Server, Sybase, and MySQL are in total uh, 2.5 times more than those of Postgres. And th th uh, those uh, systems uh, may be maybe the uh, enterprise one, so uh, we must uh, cope with uh, those uh, DBMS. So again, the question is why we choose uh, DBMS migration as a uh, tema of second uh, uh, working group. Uh, the, uh, the answer now is uh, to attract enterprise users using other DBMS uh, to Postgres. Uh, so the no migration, no enterprise. Uh, this is a slogan. Uh, this slide shows the uh, uh, report of second working group. Uh, this document includes a database migration guide as well as pilot migration uh, trial reports. Uh, this document is more than 200 pages, and it is still growing in this year. Uh, this document is open to the public in PG Econ's website. Okay, uh, now I, I would like to go on to the uh, highlight from uh, second working group report. Uh, the uh, report is organized in three parts. Uh, the first part is outlining the migration project. Uh, this includes a database migration framework. And the second part uh, includes uh, the study of each migration process. Uh, this includes uh, system architecture, uh, cooperative database systems, uh, SQL migration, uh, stored procedure, uh, built-in function migration, and uh, application migration. The third part uh, is uh, dedicated to uh, trial reports on migration works. This includes uh, research on data migration and practice, and the practice of application migration. Okay, the first topic is uh, DBMS migration framework. Uh, the uh, study, um, study is, uh, this study is outlining the DBMS migration process uh, to, to Postgres. Uh, this aims to establish uh, the common background of migration process uh, to, to us. And it is, uh, <coughs> uh, it, it is, uh, uh, it is explained as a flowchart of DBMS migration. Uh, this slide shows the uh, abridged uh, form of uh, that uh, flowchart. Uh, the second topic is, is uh, database uh, system architectures. Uh, the dedicated uh, subgroup investigate uh, major database system architectures and provide uh, information to find correspondence in Postgres. Uh, these major uh, database system architectures include a single server, uh, the high availability, high availability cluster, and uh, replication, and uh, uh, multi-master uh, load balancing. And the points needed to consider in uh, DBMS migration includes uh, high availability, and uh, read and read and write performances, and extensibility, uh, easy to design or easy to operate, and the initial cost. Uh, they, they provide the detailed uh, report on the document. 
The next topic is uh, cooperative database systems. The purpose of uh, database cooperation uh, includes uh, stepwise migration of complex system with plural database, uh, load reduction of master database, and uh, preparation for disaster, and uh, finally the data warehouse systems. Uh, the dedicated sub team, dedicated sub teams investigate uh, some software uh, which are running replication in different DBMSs. Uh, that includes uh, uh, InfoFrame uh, data coordinator uh, of NAC, uh, DB Moto of Prime, and uh, Data Spider uh, Service of uh, Apresso and uh, XDB replication server of enterprise DB. The next topic uh, is about schema migration. Again, the dedicated uh, sub-team investigate uh, schema of Oracle and Postgres. Uh, they also study uh, some manual intervention points using Oracle PG uh, tools. Uh, finally, uh, they compile uh, correspondence table for built-in data type and uh, guideline to migrate scheme. Uh, this slide shows the uh, uh, part, part of uh, correspondence table. Uh, the left side is uh, Oracle items, and uh, in right side, uh, the correspond uh, Postgres correspondence. Uh, the next topic is SQL migration. Uh, again, the sub-team investigate SQL compatibility of Oracle, SQL Server, and Postgres. And they also compile a combined table and a guideline. And this, slide, uh, this slide shows uh, a, a part of uh, conversion tables. The first items, uh, maybe. You cannot see, but uh, the first, I first item is with clause. Uh, the table says that all, all three uh, DBMS has uh, with clause. And the second one, second one is distinct. Uh, again, the table says uh, all three has, all three had uh, distinct, had. Uh, the third one is uh, unique. The table says that unique is Oracle specific. Uh, on the contrary, the fourth one is a top clause, and the top clause is SQL server specific, uh, and so on. Uh, they provide the uh, detail, detail in the document. Uh, the next topic is stored procedures migration. Uh, Oracle's uh, stored procedure is uh, considered uh, very hard to uh, migrate to other DBMS. Uh, the study uh, in this part, uh, the study uh, in this part, uh, indicate uh, conclude that uh, some part of procedure can be translated automatically. However, uh, if it is very difficult to migrate, if the procedure is involved in uh, transaction controls. And uh, for cost uh, viewpoint, uh, uh, for some stored procedures, it is much better to relate them to application logics uh, uh, than to convert them to uh, corresponding uh, stored functions. Okay. Uh, the next topic is built-in function migration. Uh, uh, the sub-team investigate built-in function uh, difference between Oracle and Postgres. They also compiled uh, built-in function comparison table. And this slide, this slide shows the part of uh, the tables. Uh, <coughs> the, left side, the, the left side shows the uh, Oracle function items. And the right, right side, uh, Show, uh, shows the uh, Postgres equivalence. Uh, for the first, first item, 
uh, is uh, advanced. Uh, the, tables, the table describes how, how you can achieve uh, Oracle advanced equivalence in Postgres. And the uh, uh, fourth one. Fourth one is DB time zone. And the table says uh, there is no correspondence in Postgres uh, to the DB time zone. Uh, they provide the details in document documentation. So uh, <clears throat> now uh, I'd like to uh, go on to uh, the third part, the trial part. The first topic of trial part is da data migration. Uh, the the sub-team studied uh, data migration process uh, from other DBMS to Postgres. Uh, the, process, uh, uh, has, uh, the process has three parts, uh, ex uh, extract part, uh, transform part, and uh, loading part. Uh, the first part uh, extract uh, uh, from other DBMS, uh, the first part extract data from other DBMS and uh, uh, convert it uh, CSV files. And this, uh, this part concerns what tools or commands are available. Uh, the second farm, the second, uh, second, farm, uh, second part uh, uh, transform uh, CV, CSV files into a Postgres uh, loadable form. Uh, this part uh, concerns uh, character, uh, character coding uh, conversion. And the uh, third, third part, loading part, uh, concerns how long does it take uh, to load uh, the data. Uh, they also apply uh, the acquired information and know-how to a practical data migration project. Okay, the final part, uh, final uh, topic is application migration trial. Uh, the sub-team apply acquired information and know-how to a, a trial migration project of a practical application on other DBMS to Postgres, 9.2.2. Uh, uh, the migration target application is named uh, Commander4j. Uh, it is open source uh, jazz, uh, jazz, no, sorry. Uh, it, it is open source Java application to create uh, barcode labels. <coughs> uh, it runs on Oracle uh, SQL Server and MySQL, uh, but uh, it did not run on uh, Postgres. Uh, the application size is 71,000 steps, and the number of uh, tables are number of tables is 39. Uh, number of uh, SQL statement is more than 3,000. And uh, luckily, uh, there, there is no stored uh, procedure. They, uh, they utilize a tool to extract necessary modification point in SQL statements. Uh, the name of the tool is DB syntax diff. Uh, this is a migration aid tool from Oracle database to Postgres. And uh, uh, it is open source software uh, developed by NTT. The license uh, is a Postgres license. Uh, it is available in GitHub site. Uh, this tool provides uh, syntax difference dictionaries and operate uh, pattern matching on uh, uh, SQL programs. Uh, it's dictionary. <coughs> Sorry. Its dictionary entries are written in regular expression, uh, regular expression form, and therefore uh, it is user customizable. Uh, the migration process is as follows. Uh, first, uh, they apply a migration to DB syntax diff to Java sources, Java source code, uh, schema DDL, and data loading DML. <coughs> Then they modify uh, calling part of Oracle JDBC driver class. After that, uh, they modify SQL statement according to DB syntax diff output. 
And finally, uh, they test the basic functionality of uh, uh, Commander 4J application. The conclusion, uh, to the conclusion of this, uh, pro uh, this uh, topic is as follows. Uh, more than 90% of time was spent in test phase. The details include uh, SQL modification was rapid due to utilization of uh, migration tool. And uh, all SQL statements were tested regardless of modification. And uh, oversight of the tool were corrected in test phase. Uh, this, uh, uh, this graph uh, indicate, uh, this graph uh, uh, shows the time consumption ratio. The year one, the year one is the uh, test phase, and uh, uh, its time ratio is 91.4% uh, 91, uh, 91 of the total, uh, total process. Uh, now I, could, I would like to uh, conclude my uh, talk by, uh, and by giving some remarks. Uh, they, are, uh, they are about uh, crucial criteria uh, for a successful migration pro uh, project. First, first of all, uh, for, what is a successful migration? Uh, even if the system itself operates, uh, starts operating in Postgres, uh, it is not a success if the migration cost ends up very huge. So uh, a successful migration we consider is migration whose final cost is very near to initial estimation. Uh, this slide shows the two points for successful migration to Postgres we consider. Uh, the first one is accuracy of uh, assessment. We consider the initial uh, assessment accuracy is most important. Uh, uh, to uh, to uh, assess accurately, you, uh, you need to understand uh, accurately the requirement of original system and the requirement of migrated new system. You also need to uh, understand accurately the difference between the original DBMS and Postgres. And you also, you, uh, finally, you, finally uh, you need to utilize uh, migration aid tools uh, very cleverly. Uh, the second point is, is uh, you need to prepare testing time sufficiently. Uh, after all, uh, all, after all works tend to be increased. And in a uh, trial, more than 90% of time is spent in test phase. Uh, so uh, modification works uh, themselves uh, can be reduced using migration tools. But uh, tools are not perfect. So you need to prepare uh, for manual modification. OK, uh, that is the end of my talk. Yeah. Any question? No? The right person to ask uh, that question is not me. Uh, it, it, the uh, documentation is compiled by many people, and uh, uh, it should be uh, their tasks, I think.
I think it might be. It might be. <laughs> uh, it, it depends on the time we have. So any other question? No? Could you, could you please answer? Okay. Um, basically, uh, JPEG is for uh, individual uh, Postgres users or developers, I think. And uh, while PG Post. Uh, while PG Post is uh, members are. Uh, uh, corporation. So um, I think the way um, to uh, perform, perform activities are very different among two organizations. Um, as you might know, um, JPEG is uh, um, very similar to other um, user uh, groups in, uh, in the world. Uh, while uh, PG in course is very unique, I don't think uh, we have uh, a similar uh, organization in the world yet. So um, there's, a, there's no, uh, so uh, I believe we, uh, we can uh, divide uh, the necessary tasks to promote Postgres in Japan uh, into two uh, organizations. Now actually, uh, we have uh, joined the conference uh, of, uh, held by JPAD once and they gave a uh, seminar. So in this regard, um, I would like to uh, make uh, uh, cooperative work uh, with uh, JPAD um, as well. So in summary, um, these two organizations uh, can uh, cooperate each other. Uh, is this answer, uh, does this answer your question? You're, you're come. Okay, so that's it.